Mike Neal was the 56th pick of the 2010 NFL Draft. Not bad for a kid who didn't even aspire to the NFL. You see, he was a basketball player. Funny thing is, is I hated football. My dad was, um, he played in 88 for the Giants. That was a love of his life, to be honest with you. He was real committed to it, but I just never, I never could grasp that. I, I didn't like it. I tried out for Pop Warner, actually played, got hit one time, like, I'm over, I'm done. And my dad's like, nope, the one thing you won't do is quit. You know, you signed up for it, finish it. I said, okay, so I finished it. Um, and that was like when I was like 10 years old and never played again into high school. You like basketball, right? Absolutely. Indiana, I mean, even Gary, Indiana, there's a basketball hoop on every garage, isn't there? Yep, I mean, now the most famous person we knew growing up was uh, Big Dog, Glenn Robinson, Glenn Robinson. Played for a long time, so basketball is just that thing in Indiana. You know, we grew up playing that. So tell me a story about how a friend of yours got you. To, you're in high school, you're not going to play football, and a friend of yours kind of talked you into it, or did you just grow back into the game, or what happened? So my freshman year, my friend's like, man, come on, Mike, try out for the football team. I'm like, nah, I'm good, man. I don't, I don't want to do that. I'm focused on basketball. So I was like, you know what? I come out to training camp. So I came out to training camp, and I rode the bench, and I did not like that. Ironically enough, that same friend gets hurt. I have to play. I was terrible. And it happened again my sophomore year. He like, come out and play. Like, nah, I just don't think this for me. Show up after training camp, and that's when it kind of all came together. I realized that, you know, I was a competitor. I did not like being able to play. Um, and then I actually got an opportunity to play on varsity, and the rest was history after that. So you, you eventually gained a love for the game, and your, your future was more football. If you were going to play sports for right. a living, yeah. You were going to make it in basketball, you were going to make it in football, right? Yeah. I, well, that same year, a lot of realizations happened. I knew going into my junior year, I wasn't going to get too much taller than what I was. Uh, 6'3", I'm like, I'll be a point guard in the NBA. Not going to happen. Um, my high school, unfortunately, didn't really condone two sport athletes. So I had a decision to make. It was either basketball or football. And um, I didn't get along with the basketball coach. So I chose football. And, you know, for me at that time, it was just – the opportunity to compete and being a competitor, uh, that's just the only thing I really cared about. It wasn't even necessarily football, it was just that I wanted the opportunity to compete. And then after that year is when the love started. Yeah. yeah. You know, and to play football at the level, major college, and you went, you wanted to go to Notre Dame, but ended up going to Purdue. But to play at that level, you kind of have to love the game, don't you? I mean, absolutely. Everything. I mean, and, and it doesn't just start on the field is what people really don't realize. It starts with waking up, going to the weight room, starts with film study, being a student of the game and understanding responsibilities and then putting it all together and putting it on the field. And me being a student at anything is what I love the most. I love to learn. So that grew naturally with me with football and weightlifting. So you go to Purdue, Joe Tiller, uh, basketball on turf. That kind of fits yep. you know, a little bit for you. But Brock Spock was the defensive coordinator. Tell us about your Purdue experience. It was, it was once again rough. When I got in, I realized with, you know, I was 240 pounds soaking wet. I wanted to be a defensive end. They saw my dad. He's like 330. It's like, no way. We're going to make you a defensive tackle. And I did not like that. So it was very hard for me to gain weight. Um, so my freshman year, I put on 40 pounds. I went from 240 to 285, and got into spring ball, was a little bit heavier. And it was rough for me at the beginning, but playing under Joe Tiller, that staff, Brock's back, um, the coaches that I had at defensive tackle, they were able to actually make that change for me and, and being committed to the weight room and doing everything that I did. So, uh, but it was, it was a great time. I loved it, Purdue, I loved that school. Like so many of his teammates, Neil watched the Super Bowl run of 2010 from the injured reserve list after playing in just two games. That was an experience um, and a bittersweet one, to be honest with you. Uh, drafted that high, I don't think that really anybody expected me to get drafted in the second round. A lot of questions as to why Green Bay even drafted me, uh, but they saw potential. And that potential was, was not only are you a defensive tackle, but you're an athlete and we need athletes because we got big run stoppers, but we need people to be able to play in a nickel and dime defense. And that's what they saw in me, and that's what I was projected to do. And, 
And obviously I got hurt that year, so it was really, really tough for me to sit back and watch it. But you understand a lot from the vets. Um, they give you just a lot of wisdom, encouragement. And, and it was challenging for me, but it formed everything that I needed to actually get through my seasons here at Green Bay. Who kind of, there's always somebody, who kind of took you or how many different guys took you under their wing and, and showed you the ropes and taught you how to be a pro? Collectively, I can say, just even in that defensive room, Charles Woodson, Clay Matthews, Cullen Jenkins, Ryan Pickett, um, Nick Collins, it, it was just everybody collectively. Nick Barnett was a big uh, key for that too because I hung around Nick a lot my, my rookie year. And they just, they showed you how to be a pro, if not anything. And when the chips were stacked against you, how to respond, uh, obviously with the injuries too. Your role eventually evolved on the team. Tell us about that and, and did you feel like you were able to accomplish what you thought you might be able to when you entered the pros? I'm still not satisfied. I'm still mad that my career is over with because I still don't feel like I accomplished what I wanted to. But I can tell you to come into the NFL as a 312 pound defensive tackle, then to drop down to 253, play outside linebacker, rush from inside at three technique, get a chance to rush in a rover package as Mike. Uh, I did a lot and I think that they saw a lot in me and it gave me the opportunity to never come off the field. Um, and just developing the relationships with the players that I had. I mean, me and Clay did a lot of things on defense together where it, it made him very productive and it made me productive. So my role grew and you know, being able to start my last three, four years is cool. I want to ask you about your final game, your final season, 2015 in Washington, the uh, wild card playoff game. Tell me about that day and that, that game. It was emotional. I, there was a lot of things that was happening off the field uh, that a lot of people wasn't aware about. And honestly, I was I was hurt. I had um, a hip that I had a surgery on. At that point, three bilateral sports hernias, and it was very, very hard for me to play every single game. And what a lot of people don't understand was those last three years for the last 10 games, I was a game time decision. It was very hard for me to get through practice, but um, I knew that in order to stay in this league or even to get a contract, I had to play. And I was a starter. And that meant a lot to me. So coming into that game, you know, I just had a chip on my shoulder and everything fell in, in, in the right direction. And history shows that every single time we played Washington, it's my first career sack. Over the years, every single time we played Washington, I had great, great, great games. So that one just fell in a bucket for me. A two sack game, tackle, strip, for strip, uh, you know, fumble recovery. It was cool. I, I loved everything about it. Your experience in Green Bay, um, how do you reflect back on it now? In hindsight, um, I loved it, man. I, I, I grew up in the Northwest region, of Indiana. This is very, very, very similar feeling to growing up in Indiana. It felt like home. I mean, this is the only place I can tell you that you go, you feel that community, you feel that family oriented thing and the relationship that you develop, the people are just uncanny from the way that they deal with you on and off the field. You just, everywhere you go and people know who you are, that means a lot. It's like being born into a fraternity. I was just telling Mike Montgomery is, you know, you just part of that, that is who you are. and. I miss it uh, a lot. So it's, it's different being back in Green Bay uh, from this side of the ball, but I enjoy it. But it sounds like you always are. You always are going to be a Packer, right? I'm happy that I got drafted in my career and in the one spot. I can tell you the only thing I prayed for was my career started and ended in the same place. And for it to have happened here, I couldn't be more thankful. Mike was a solid starter for the better part of three seasons out of six in Green Bay. A one-stop career he'll never forget.